Now we are talking parenting now and a shocking new report from UNICEF has found half of students aged 13 to 15 worldwide mm. have reported experiencing violence at school. That's around 150 million teens. Kiwi kids are among them so we are talking about high school politics today on The Coffee Group with Yvonne Godfrey and Sean Olsen. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. Sean let's start with you. What types of things happen in schools around the country that maybe parents aren't aware of? A big one would be the cyberbullying, so things like Snapchat and Instagram are making it easier and easier these days to send a message or send something harmful to someone without them even knowing who it is. And then also peer pressure from the older year groups is becoming more and more popular and acceptable in many schools mm. throughout the country. So when I say that, it's the things like the drugs, the vaping, smoking, things that parents in the ideal world wouldn't want their kids touching. Mm is becoming acceptable and pressure is being put on them by the older students in the school that it is acceptable, it's fine, just do it. If you don't do it, well, you can't fit in. Where do you belong? You shouldn't be here. That's, uh, mm. that's a bit terrifying, but that's, that's been a problem, I think, I remember when I was at high school, same sort of thing. You were getting mm. that pressure from the years above. Um, why do you think some kids bully, Yvonne? Probably beginning at home, where they've been badly modelled, if there's violence at home in any way, verbal, physical, cyberbullying, so they're mimicking it. Um, but also if they're not coping, sometimes mm. kids will bully rather than be bullied, uh, so it's a defence mechanism. And lastly, uh, just wanting to be dominant, there's a real narcissism <laughs> around where they want to be top dog, they want to be part of the group that is seen to be the most popular and like Sean said, if they get into that peer pressure, they can often be a bully when it's not really in their nature, mm. but it's just cool to be part of that group. But they still are being a bully, so mm -hmm. it has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, Sean, what do you think parents should do? I mean, is it okay for parents, because as a parent you want to step in and and protect your child if they're being bullied. Is it okay for parents to do that? It is, but the parent needs to remember that there is always two sides to a story. Mm. Mm. There may be things surrounding it, but when I say that, don't say your child is lying or isn't giving you the whole truth. Find the other side of the story, see the school. But if the student or the child is asking you, just give them a chance to sort it. It's in their best interest just to trust them and monitor their social media and monitor how they're feeling closely so then if you do need to step in, you're right there and you know the full facts of it so it doesn't get out of hand. Mm. And Yvonne, mm. there's always that case too that what if our child is the bully? Mm. I mean, what's the best advice you can offer Look, there? if your child's the bully, sometimes it's not a surprise because mm. they're possibly being showing bullying behaviour at home. They might be bullying you. Mm. I see a lot of that, uh, teenagers bullying their parents, particularly the mums. Um, but you want to have a non-confronting talk about it. The minute you confront a bully, you're going to get defensive uh, feedback. So you really want to get to the core of it because your job as a parent is to help your child through that and to be able to deal with it. And that could take some counselling. It could take somebody mm. outside professionally to help you with that. Do you think sometimes they may not realise that they are being a bully? Uh, that's probably a good question for Sean. Mm. I think they probably do know. But then you want to fix it. So if possible, apologies, make it right with the victim, but that may not be possible. It mm. may have been taken out of your hands. Uh, so yeah, And then create space. So it might mean taking away their devices or definitely uh, distancing from the victim, mm. be that taking them out of the database, uh, making sure they're not, not in a physical proximity with them, if you can, mm. if you can do that. Sean, what's the best advice you've been given about uh, working with bullying? The best one, if you can, shrug it off, laugh at them. Mm. But in the ideal world, that will always happen, but it's not. The best thing is just walk away, just remove yourself from that situation. Mm. And it's not always easy because sometimes it is people you consider your friends. Mm. So if you can, remove yourself from the situation, find someone that you can trust, whether that's a parent, a friend, a teacher, and just confide in them. Mm. And, ask them for help and there's always someone there to help you so it's mm. just about finding that person. Ask for help and also mm. sometimes if you walk away from it they want the reaction from you if they're not getting it they're going to stop. That's right. However well, that's been enlightening thank you both very much for joining us today on The Coffee Group and next week on The Coffee Group we're going to look at ways to avoid those hidden sugars.